Since the late 90s, this Honda CRV has been the best selling crossover in America. Now, with this updated sixth generation, all new, new hybrid system, is this the best compact? Well, use that lightly. Is this the best compact crossover in the market today? We're going to find out. <laughs> The Honda CRV has grown up. The wheelbase is longer, the track is wider, the length is longer. We have the longest hood in Honda history, at least in the United States, anyways. This thing looks like a half size up from the old CRV. And I tell you what, it is a beautiful design inside and out. On the exterior, I get a lot of Euro designs, almost looks Volkswagen Audi ish. And we have those iconic D pillar vertical tail lines that we've seen in every single of the six generations of the CRV. Now this being the sport touring model, this is the top of the line. We have dual exhaust tips on each side, a nice little diffuser here at the bottom. Honeycomb, I just noticed this uh, Q, honeycomb here on the rear bumper. We'll see that on the interior as well. Going back old school with the all wheel drive sticker. You can get this in front wheel drive in the sport model, mind you, and with the hybrid trim. There's that hybrid logo. Now the sport touring gives you the largest wheels available. You see, you see these glossy, shiny black 19 inch wheels. The normal sport model will just have 18 inch wheels that are black as well. Oh my gosh, isn't it just so beautiful? Also, this engine setup is beautiful as well. This is the two liter two motor hybrid setup for Honda. It gives you mechanical all wheel drive. It gets you around 37 miles per gallon on this model. The front wheel drive model will get you around 40 miles per gallon. Now we have more horsepower than before. Three more ponies, 204 horsepower, and we have 15 more pound feet of torque at 247 pound feet. Power lift gate, Honda's really impressing us with how fast this raises and how fast it closes while being quiet. More cargo space than we've ever seen before. And you see the seat reclining. This is the highest reclination, I don't know, reclining seat. The greatest reclining seat Honda's ever created. Uh, I'll put the exact degrees in there. There's lots of different ways you can recline that seat. 180 watt, 12 volt adapter back here with a nice LED light. This has the Bose sound system. So you see the large subwoofer back here. When you fold down the seats, you have more cargo space than you've ever had before as well. Let's close this and just see and listen. We trapped a couple of bugs in there. Very quiet and quick at the same time. Unfortunately, even though these are beautiful LED, these tail lights, we have incandescent bulbs in there for the turn signals. Getting on the inside of the new CRV, listen for that door. Wow, that feels and sounds very premium. Here we have memory seats around the door handle. We kind of have this honeycomb pattern on the trim here on the doors in the sport touring model. And we have a blacked out bezel here on the front with that tiny micro honeycomb design inside of it. And then you have the large honeycomb that we saw in the Civic and the HRV. So Honda has like the best feeling uh, air switches I've ever felt with a nice click right in the middle. Also the climate control knobs are super simple, very intuitive, easy to use. And we also have heated seats, no ventilated seats in this model. And we also have that heated steering wheel button here on this sport touring model. Nine inch touchscreen in this model, which gives you wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. I took it to get out here to the middle of nowhere. Uh, and so it's done a pretty good job so far. And then we have this customizable MID back here. Now the right side is a physical speedometer. The left side is that digital gauge. Two USB-Cs up front, a 12 volt adapter. Here's that wireless charger, which is standard on the Sport Touring. And we have a beautiful shifter, which orange stitches. And this is uh, just beautiful. No push button malarkey going on. We also have a new battery recharging setting that we've never seen before on a Honda, I don't believe. You also have downhill ascent control. You have to be going downhill, I think at a seven degree uh, decline. And it goes from two to 12 miles per hour. I'll fact check that if that's not right. You also have drive modes. What's new here is going to be that snow mode which I don't <laughs> there's no snow around me so I'm not going to be using it standard sunroof here we do not have a panel roof available on this model sunglass holder at the top folding down the visor we do have a little incandescent bulb it looks like uh, so at least it's illuminated for that vanity mirror I have my cold brew here and this is a local cold brew uh, Zaka coffee I think it's local even though it's a llama but it's really good I'm not sponsored by them Fiji water not sponsored by them either but the drinks haven't been flying around or anything when I'm driving this hard underneath uh, the armrest we have a large space no 12 volt or anything in there for connection but you have this little adjustable tray we have the 12 speaker Bose sound system it sounds pretty good it gets fairly loud 
Uh, the highs aren't the highest, but I feel like the mids and the lows are pretty strong in this vehicle. Getting in the back seat, additional, uh, or should I say mirroring of that front door. A nice click, look, auto touch windows on the way down. It doesn't, they don't go all the way down, so if you're wondering, it stops right there, it doesn't go any further. But nice tactile feedback even on that window switch. Now, if you have kids, not only is it easy to latch with these big hooks right there, uh, this door opens up super wide. Like guys, this is about 90 degrees. That is incredible. So getting kids in and out is gonna be super easy in here, even if you have rear facing seats. Uh, the seat is reclined quite a bit. And so I feel like taking a nap back here. Oh, and this is a cool little CRV nugget there. Closing the door. Sounds almost as good as the front door, so that's impressive. Nice soft back to these leather seats, which I didn't mention a second ago. Very high quality. I love the leather. I love the orange contrast. It gives you just a little sporty edge. And this is just a beautiful outlook of the front cabin. I just like the design overall. And I haven't talked about the steering wheel. The steering wheel feels like, oh, just feels great. So soft, so smooth. We have vents in the back seat. So if you guys were wondering, uh, yes, you can cool off your passengers in the back and like the new HRV. Two USB-Cs. If you want the USBs, you have to get this trim. You can't get it on the EXL. You can't get it on the sport model. One mat pocket in the back. If I fold this down, we have a couple more cup holders. Not very deep and they might be a little on the small end as well. Me at six foot one sitting behind myself at six foot one. I do have a large amount of leg room back here. My feet can happily slide underneath the seat. So a lot of space back here for taller passengers. There is a beautiful crv driving right there looking good it's sophia and redline reviews we're off in the all new 2023 sixth generation crv hybrid now being in california it's a little bit different than florida i have massive elevation changes so the cool thing is you can pop it down in this new battery mode for this hybrid and you have four different regen settings so it does a lot of regen braking on the way down i have it on the max setting right now um, i'm not using the brake so it's just kind of controlling my descent. I'm going about 12. It's starting to accelerate just a little bit. If I add a little bit of brake, but just a tiny bit, it really does uh, keep the vehicle from running away from you and help recharging the battery to improve your efficiency while you're driving this vehicle. Now that the grade isn't as uh, aggressive, I can use these paddle shifters. Yes, these paddle shifters are not for shifting gears. They're for adjusting your regen braking. Now, um, if you're in this battery mode, you can't use the radar cruise control. You have to pop it back and to drive. This road's kind of bad down this way and they just want people to stay off of it. That's perfectly so, fine. Hey, thank you for redirecting it. me. Thank Take you. care. Man, that view is just unbelievable. There goes the CRV going that way. And <laughs> he just told me not to go that way. So uh, we're gonna go down this road. And you know what? This is a nice straight road here. Uh, we're gonna do a quick zero to 60. You know, pavement's not perfect. Don't know if it's completely level. Uh, we're going to put it into sport mode. Three, two, one, and go. A good launch. It launches a lot better than the turbo model. Uh, let me roll up the window. Feel like the turbo, the turbo, there's 60. The turbo feels like it has a little bit more top end, but this is a lot more responsive off the line. So zero to 60 there, totally unofficial, but my drag meter set a little over 10, 10 and a quarter. So I just wanted to show you guys, I did a zero to 60. I didn't have the camera on. Uh, I turned the AC off this time and that seemed to be a world of difference. I went from 10 and a quarter to 7.83. Uh, the turbo that I did was mid to upper nines if I remember right. So yeah, zero to 60 on this thing. If you have the AC off, seems to be a game changer with the amount of acceleration you get. Um, it starts slowing down around 50 or miles an hour, but that initial zero to 40 is pretty impressive. But this vehicle is not about performance necessarily. The initial performance is there. That initial response is great from this new dual motor hybrid setup. But you know, efficiency is, is uh, what this vehicle has improved upon. Um, this thing can get around 37 miles per gallon. Um, the front wheel drive can get around 40 miles per gallon. And this AC is really strong. Um, I don't have to pump the fans that much and the fans are very quiet. And speaking of quiet, this new CRV is so quiet. I feel like I'm in a luxury car and just going downhill, I can use a regen braking. And they've made the, the suspension a little bit lighter. They've made it a little bit more rigid, but I still feel like this thing glides, even this 19 inch wheels, it feels very premium, very upscale. The materials, you know, they're, they're good in this top trim. Um, they're not, 
they're not like a luxury grade, but I feel like the overall feeling of this vehicle is very solid, very roomy, very luxury like with how quiet and smooth this vehicle is in the steering. You better believe it's got a little of that Civic DNA in here. The Civic and this share that similar global platform. So it shares a lot of that uh, agility with the Civic during uh, pushing this vehicle during uh, driving in these mountain roads. So it is fun to drive. It feels big, but then you throw it in the turns. It's like, well, it's, it really doesn't feel heavy though. Um, it just feels big because this is the largest CRV that's ever been made. And I'm just cruising EV, EV mode. And the, the turning on of the engine, I never really feel it, which is impressive because most hybrids out there, you're going to feel that engine kick in, a little shudder, a little vibration. This is completely different. I have to listen for it. And even then it's very quiet. They've added a lot of insulation at the bottom of the hood uh, and the firewall, etc. So it is a very quiet, smooth driving experience. Now I was getting on the on-ramp earlier and actually simulated, I think I'm still in sport mode. I'm gonna put it back in normal. It actually simulated um, like real gear. So it was stepping with that, this uh, ECVT setup as I was accelerating on the highway. Now, where this does have a little bit of a drawback, it's still the based off the, the Honda technology that was in the Accord Hybrid that I drove maybe a year or two ago at this point. And that means if you stomp on the gas, you are waiting for it to quote unquote downshift for it to take off. And there is quite a bit of lag. I was hoping Honda would have fixed that delayed response when you need it. But if you do a half press the accelerator, it's much more responsive. It starts moving quicker uh, than if you just put full pedal down. It's like, it doesn't know what to do. And then it goes, you know, full revs uh, on that little two liter. Another reason why it's so quiet in here, on this sport touring trim, you have acoustic windshield and acoustic front windows here. That's typically seen in much more expensive vehicles to keep the interior nice and quiet. And driving this on the highway, I, got, I get a little bit of noise on the uh, side mirrors, but like as I pass the Sprinter van here, I barely hear it. So just, I don't know if it's just so quiet or they have just the right frequency of white noise, but it's a very quiet interior. That, that semi-truck didn't even make that much noise. So Honda, I don't know what you've done, but this vehicle has premium feel to it with the steering wheel, the driving mechanics, the, 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 the ride quality, and then also has premium characteristics as it is just so quiet. Now being out here in the middle of nowhere, my Android Auto loses cell coverage. For five oh, miles. she's, she's, uh, she doesn't have the prettiest voice but this has built-in navigation and this navigation um, accounts for hills so it can maximize the battery charging and discharging to get the best mpgs and just having this with no cell service this gps based built-in system here uh, is essentially a godsend because i have no idea where i am i don't know really how to get back to the hotel uh, and since I have no cell service, this comes in as a lifesaver. No, it's not as pretty, but I, I just need to, to get back uh, to the hotel and I don't care what it looks like. And uh, yeah, you can mute that robotic, cold-hearted voice if you need to. I'm out here driving on the highway. The steering assist is amazing. I'm going about 55 to 60 miles an hour and I've really crept up my MPGs since the beginning of this video. It was 31, now I'm inching closer to 36 miles per gallon. And it's really easy to just keep up with traffic. I just, you know, flip, flip this switch a couple times to increase the miles per hour one at a time. Uh, and this thing, man, is this the smoothest hybrid that I've driven? Well, maybe that's not a plug-in hybrid, and I think it might be. I'm, I compare it to Toyota's hybrids, it's not quite as efficient as Toyota hybrids, but I feel like it's a more refined hybrid system, maybe because I just never feel the engine. And when I do hear it, it's never like crying out in pain. It's never uh, feeling unrefined, like I mentioned earlier. So. Honda, you might have the smoothest hybrid system. And comparing it to the Koreans, this is a little bit like the Koreans where it likes to be, like I'm in EV mode going uphill right now. So it likes to either be in, you know, let the gasoline engine do its thing or the electric side do its thing. Um, both working at the same time only for like pretty hard acceleration. So 
Uh, it's very much like the Koreans, um, but the Koreans also have like a, a actual physical gearbox, like a six speed. Um, this is kind of like a perfect melding of the Korean hybrids and the Toyota hybrids, but it, it's probably smoother than any of them. So Honda, nice job. I can't wait. Like I know there's more hybrids coming because I know the new Civic hybrids coming and that thing is going to be super smooth as well because it'll be a derivative of this two liter two motor hybrid system. And the engine, I can't tell when it's on and off. I know I've said this many times, but I am, the gasoline engine's on, I'm going uphill. I don't hear it at all. I hear a little bit of like white noise coming from the road, but it's not a harsh noise. It's very pleasant in here. It almost sounds like there's a noise maker or a fan white noise kind of drowning everything out. Um, but like I'm able to have a normal conversation with the camera right now. I don't feel like I'm yelling, just using my voice at like a normal indoor volume. Um, so no engine, I can't feel any vibration at all through the steering wheel as it's that engine's pulling me uphill. You can kind of see what's going on uh, through this uh, diagram here. And since the beginning of my drive while I was talking to the camera when I started up on the top of that mountain there, getting 45 miles or 44.5 miles per gallon but over the the course of my trip it's 35.8 and i'll give you an update when i eventually get back to the hotel i'm going 47 miles an hour the engine just kicked on it took me all the way from zero to about 50 miles an hour without the engine kicking on at all and when it did kick on i didn't feel it so again just so impressed with this hybrid system with the smoothness and the incognito nature of this two liter gas sipping four cylinder. So I just got a sign that said downhill for the next eight miles. Well, it felt like I was going uphill for eight miles. And so I figured there would be a time where we go back downhill. And that's when using these paddle shifters are really awesome. Um, I don't have my foot on the brake. Well, until now, this is 40 miles an hour. Slow down a little bit but this uh, CRV could easily handle it. And then I want to really re-accelerate just a little bit. So I reduce the amount of regen braking uh, to, to one bar. Uh, and so now I'm at a more of a, a faster descent. So it's pretty cool that you can really modulate charger. I mean, the battery's topped off already. I got another seven miles of this essentially. And so with the battery already full, as I was using this deceleration, the pads here, the, the car smart enough to, it doesn't want to overcharge the battery. That's, you know, that would destroy it. So what happened there, it actually kicked on the engine to assist with deceleration. Even though it said I was in EV mode, the engine was screaming at max RPMs to keep this vehicle uh, decelerating as I went down the hill. So that's fairly interesting on the power shifters and the engine like just this hybrid system the electric side and the gas side are always working hand in hand they're never like hey come and help me i need your help right now it's like oh no let's do this together they do everything together it's so smooth i never and the engine i just felt kick on a little bit with the deceleration there even though it says i'm still in ev mode so fascinating hybrid system and it's been a joy to drive through these mountains and beautiful California roads testing out this all new CRV hybrid. Finishing my drive 43.9 miles per gallon on the return trip and combined on the way out there over 133 miles 37.7 miles per gallon in the new CRV hybrid. Now while driving the sport touring model has been awesome I really wanted to drive the more bang for your buck model which is going to be the same powertrain but in the lesser sport grade and that comes in at like five six grand less than this in the front wheel drive you can also get the sport and all-wheel drive you can only get all-wheel drive with the sport touring they don't give you the front wheel drive option uh, they've also canceled the lx grade so it's just ex exl for the turbo uh, and then the sport and the sport touring for the hybrid so unfortunately not able to give you driving impressions or miles per gallon on that sport model with the front wheel drive. Uh, that's going to be a big value play as Honda wants to sell half of the CRVs as hybrids with this new sixth generation. So it'll be cool to see these things hit the road this month. Even hitting these like, uh, you know, notification bumps to slow you down. Try to make sure this is like a turn. I'm going to throw this in though. But it's just very quiet hitting those bumps. <laughs> Lots of grip with these 19 inch wheels and tires. 
<laughs> not that much body roll either. So you can push this thing around the turns. It is more agile than you would think just by sitting in here, uh, but it does, it is a Honda DNA. And so it is a little bit, and get into the, the throttles that get out. It is a little bit fun to drive while pushing this. I would still say the HRV is maybe a little bit more fun in the turns. It is much lighter than this. Uh, and of course the Civic's on another world with its handling, even, even in the non-SI trims. But yeah, it's got that Honda, that little, that little Honda racing DNA from the Civic built into this as they share uh, some of that same new global platform. And that new global platform will also be seen in the new Pilot and I think the new Accord uh, thereafter. So this has been a big year for Honda, Type R, HRV. Uh, we have the new CRV and the new Pilot. It's been a lot. So I'm looking forward to this being out on the streets. Let me know what you guys uh, have for questions on the new CRV. It's been an absolute joy to drive. Um, even with these hills, the torque of this keeps this thin. It's not too buzzy. Even when you're at full tilt, I'll do it real quick. It's so smooth and like satisfying. It doesn't seem like it's unrefined or, or vibration-y. It's just, you know, like sewing machine smooth and quiet, even when you have the pedal to the metal. But anyways, I got to cut myself off somewhere. Thank you guys for, for watching this. Thank you, Honda, for bringing me out to Santa Barbara uh, and enjoying this beautiful drive. Um, and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe for more. Catch you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and peace.